and welcome to this week's update. Right, on the channel then, so last week the final part of the Armour Hobby Hurricane went up. That, um, I've had some really nice feedback on that actually, the weathering. I'm so glad in hindsight that I split that final part into two parts. One concentrating on the camouflage and the markings, which were all sprayed. And then the uh, second sort of part of the final part, if you like, detailing all the weathering. Because it was a very um, in-depth weathering job on that particular kit. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can go up and watch that now. Um, which means the next project is this, the F-14. Uh, let me just move that round actually, because it's a bit shiny, there we go. The uh, Tamiya F-14 is finished, it's right here. I'm gonna dit on about that in a minute. Videos wise, to be honest, I'm only halfway through editing the cockpit. I'm uh, really quite far behind, because I needed to get this done, because actually next Wednesday, I fly home for over a week. What I'll probably do is put up the introductory video and then there'll just be a bit of a pause in content for a couple of weeks while I'm at home. Uh, I'm only home for, I'm home for about sort of 10 days or so over Crimbo, um, have a little break from it. Um, I might get a chance to do some editing while I'm at home or at least on the six hour flight. But uh, the flight home is an overnighter and uh, coming back it's during the day. So I might be able to do some then, but we'll just have to see how I get on. But actually, I want a bit of a break and a bit of a breather and a bit of a reset. So expect part one at some point. Um, as for the, uh, the rest of it, uh, I'm going to do a dedicated one on the cockpit because I use the Red Fox Studios set on that and it's absolutely beautiful so I want to go into detail on that and how I painted the seats. The construction should be fairly straightforward <clears throat> although the wings is a little bit different, uh, more of that in a moment, uh, but what I really want to do is go to town on the painting and weathering on this thing because uh, it was a really involved project. I'm hoping that I managed to capture the undercarriage because the undercarriage is from Detail and Wonder. It's 3D printed and the detail is unbelievable. I don't often um, sort of wax that lyrical about a product, but honestly, every single pipe, nut, fixture, fitting is there. And it is so incredibly fine. It's mind blowing. It really is. Um, I'm just hoping it's going to come out because with the black background and the white um, painted, the camera was struggling a little bit with the contrast. So I'm hoping the detail on the white is not going to get washed out. What I'm going to do is experiment with some different background colours. Uh, I quite like black, but my camera does struggle with it. Um, I'm trying to find a nice grey. I've got a warm grey and a cold grey. But they're only small, I can only get those small sheets. Um, I'm going to need to nip to Jurea and try and find something that's um, that's going to work. What I want is a kind of a neutral mid-grey colour. But then that tends to be the plastic colour and uh, you lose stuff like that as well. So I don't know. Um, I'll have a little experiment with the next couple of models. Right, the F-14. Here it is. I've got to be very careful picking it up because... There's so many dangly bits on this. Um, here we go. Um, there it is. <laughs> it's a big old model with the wings out like this. Obviously, this has got the flaps and slats dropped. And um, I have to say, I, I do think this is one of my best models that I've done. That's kind of two in a row that, with the Hurricane and now this. Um, certainly the best jet I've ever built. I'm just... I'm just really pleased with the weathering. Now I'll stick up some pictures now. I'm going to put it down before I break something. Um, so the canopy comes off. That just sits on there and I modified the struts with some Albion alloys tubing. The tail planes, um, if I get these off carefully, right the tail planes come off. They are held on with polycaps. 
and then the wings are not glued in and they come off. If I can just take them out like that and here are the wings. Um, so I built this aeroplane for a friend of mine. He wanted this particular version with the flaps and slats dropped and uh, actually it's, uh, I'm really glad I've done that because I, 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 I think it looks amazing with the red uh, against the grey looks absolutely brilliant but it was it's actually really quite complicated because if you were going to build this like this and then paint it it's going to be really difficult masking uh, because of the red of the recesses so you have to kind of paint it as you go along uh, or paint it in its sub assemblies and then bring it all together like a little mini kit on its own the flaps is easy if I'm honest um, I painted the grey first, uh, then masked that off and then painted the red. That was easy. But the slat, so the slat comes in two parts, top and bottom. And what you have is the uh, this sort of panel line here is actually back. So um, you've got the main part of the wing and then there's a, like a narrow strip which is on a funny, follows the panel line which is a bit wiggly. Um, and it's... Uh, I worried that actually you're going to get gaps and things like that after painting, but um, it's Tamir. So no worries with that. Painting it as I went along though, is it just takes a little bit of thought. If you think about it logically, build up the sub-assemblies, see how it goes together, then you can paint the red, the grey and uh, the Corrigard, the kind of metal um, paste um, epoxy stuff on the leading edge um, you can have a real think about it and then obviously what's more complicated is this is heavily weathered so with the different greys going down and then all the oils and, and everything it was a pain and I even painted the stars and bars what I should have done as well is painted the 107 the numeral but do you know what the decals were amazing. I'll talk about the decals later. So that's the wings. Uh, the cockpit using the Red Fox Studio stuff is amazing. I've used the Edward Brassin seats. They are amazing. The cockpit fits in the nose subassembly, which slides on. Some people say that actually <clears throat> it uh, the fit is so good that you can paint it all separately and then stick it in. Actually, when I, my dry fit, I didn't quite get that uh, and I had to fill a little, say fill, and just use a, a smear of Mr. Surfacer just on the, on the right hand side, um, just to fare that in. Um, so I couldn't do that. The uh, rest of the airframe though, just falls together. Again though, you have to think about painting as you go along. The design of it, it's a bit easier to pick up now, The um, having said that, I've got to be careful. Uh, the design of it, uh, where the intakes are, you paint up the intakes, they give you masks, you have to cut them out yourself, but masks for inside the intake, which is a really nice touch, so thank you Tamir. But I highly recommend you actually paint the fuselage behind the intakes and paint the intakes and also paint around the undercarriage bays and then because you're going to paint the undercarriage bays white and it would just save a lot of masking later on so again really get your thinking cap on if you're going to build this kit and have a think how you're going to paint as you go along just to save yourself a complicated masking job talking of masking jobs um with my newfound uh, portrait three silhouette cutter thing I did the uh, a lot of the main markings were sprayed so the stars and bars as I mentioned before on the wing but all these tail markings the stripes the NF uh, the Navy were all masked and sprayed uh, and uh, actually I think I could have got away with the VF 154 on the back certainly the buzz numbers 
Um, I could have got away with maybe even the 07 on the tail, but maybe not. That is quite fine. But the decals are superb. Right, I'm well, bang the pito somehow. Right, um, <clears throat> that's that. Now, now, you will note in the photos that the nose wheel is not straight. Uh, it's actually the wrong way around. But, um, if you're very careful, you can turn it. I'm not going to, just in case I snap something off um, now, because it is kind of set up. But the way that the 3D printer has been done means you can actually cast the nose wheel. Um, nose wheel, yeah, bit of a nightmare. So this is the left hand wheel from the Detail and Wonder 3D printed set. This is the right hand wheel from the 3D printed set with the outer hub missing. I noticed that today. It's just disappeared and I've no idea where it is. So what I've done is um, I'd actually bought the Def Model wheel set and I today I had to paint up and weather the uh, nose wheels from that set. They're ever so slightly smaller than the Detail and Wonder set, but the detail is, is it's not quite as good, but it's, you couldn't tell the difference. It's only because I had both next to each other and I was comparing them. The detail is better on the Detail and Wonder, but they're still way better than the kit wheels, which are still very nice. So that's the kind of the, the airframe. Um, the ordnance. So I went for the Lantern Pod, the Phoenix, two winders, two big bombs, and one little bomb underneath LGBs. They're Payboy twos. Uh, I'm assuming that's a two thousand pounders and a five hundred pounder at the back, um, and only one because I do like asymmetric loadouts. I think it adds real interest to the model if it's asymmetric. Um, and I have seen pictures of, of that particular bomb configuration. <clears throat> so that's the audience, and obviously the fuel tanks. You've got to have fuel tanks on an F-14 because it, it makes it look even more meaty um, than it is. Right, the painting. I'm going to put it down before I knock something off. What I did is I saved the painting and weathering till last. So I did all the undercarriage. I did the seats. I did the ordnance, I did the burner cans. Um, burner cans actually are, uh, again, Edward Brassin. You get one open and one closed. I had a look at photos on the internet to make sure I got them the right way round. So the closed is on the port and the open on the starboard. The detail's really nice and uh, actually I've done um, quite a lot of oil weathering on the inside to get that sort of patina and the sort of quite dusty look actually, it looks like it up there. So that was those, they were done separately. The tailplanes were left off, and uh, just uh, because it's much easier, because they're a different colour. And what I did is the um, sort of inflatable bags uh, for the wing sweep that go on the top, obviously they're um, alternate parts. They, uh, they were painted separately, again, to save an awkward masking job. Um, but once they were all painted and weathered, uh, the fit is so good, you just glue them in and then the sort of bits, the sort of curved bits um, that they sort of slot in and they just glue in, just it looks all homogeneous, part of the moulding, the fit is superb. Um, and then you can just slip the wings on um, at the end. The painting, I used MRP paints. The, uh, the grace was quite easy, but I didn't have the, uh, the dark gray for the tails and the spine. So I mixed that up myself. And um, I was quite careful because <clears throat> if, if I'd used the same colors in the TPS scheme on there, I think it might've been a bit too blue. And when you look at it, it's that, that dark gray is actually, um, it's less blue, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, there's more of sort of a brown tinge. It's quite a warm shade of, of gray actually. Um, so I mixed that up. And then as I went along painting, 
a lot of shading, a lot over the panel lines. And when you look at the, some of the touch-ups on these aeroplanes, you can see where they've um, sort of done the touch-up and then you've got a, like a, a, a contrasting bit on the inside. So it's almost like you've got like, for example, uh, on the top, the darker sort of blue-gray, then quite a wide spray pattern around the panel lines and then a darker, thinner line on the inside. So you get that sort of 3D effect. So that was a challenge and it was great fun to do. And um, <clears throat> I actually used on this one, Flory Models clay wash. I'll just go and get that stuff. So here it is. I haven't used this for a long time. This stuff works brilliantly on very weathered grey jets. You've got to be careful on the subject because um, it can be a bit too contrasty and it doesn't sort of blend like oils blend. It's clay based, it's acrylic um, water uh, with I'm assuming some very tiny amount of detergent to uh, reduce the surface tension you give it a really good mix and then you just you just brush paint the entire model in it when it's perfectly dry you go in and you rub it off and I just use a bit of kitchen towel with a, a little bit of moisture and um, just to reactivate it and it just comes off but if um, if you're careful and you manipulate it do it over a if you do it over a gloss finish it'll just wipe off and you'll just leave it in the panel lines i did it over a satin finish using vms which is like a matte finish but with a with a really nice sheen and that really grips this wash stuff so um the advantage of that is is it kind of stains the paint a little bit and then you can play with it as you're taking it off and if you don't like it, you can just take the whole thing off. Um, and if you uh, take a little bit too much off, when you're cleaning up, you can just put some more back down. It's really versatile stuff. And like I say, it works great on these heavily weathered gray aeroplanes. The one I, uh, the, the tone I used is this one, it's dark dirt. It's a very dark gray, but very warm. It's sort of a, a, a brownie gray. It's really nice, but you've got to be careful with the contrast. It is actually quite dark. They do do black. I've got a, a grime here, which is a lighter colour. I was going to use that on the uns, underside, but actually it's so grubby, this aeroplane, that the dark dirt worked um, quite nicely, even though it's a lighter tone. So I'm really pleased with how that's come out. The disadvantage of this stuff is if you've got a tight corner, such as on the wing fences, you can't really get in to remove it. But... Um, what I did is I just went in with a very damp brush with water and then you can blend it away and, and sort of play with it like that. Uh, and it worked really quite nicely. So I'm really, really, really pleased with how that turned out. Um, what else to say? And then, yeah, so uh, essentially when that was, uh, when that was finished, it was, uh, it was decalled, sorry, before I varnished it and, um, and, uh, did all the weathering. I should have mentioned the decals. The decals are from Fighter Town. Fighter Town decals. And, and you get about, oh, I don't know, a gazillion different schemes on the sheet. The sheet is huge. And they were superb. They went down so well. Um, I just used uh, Ammo's setting solution, but uh, to me is mark fit strong and it worked really well I did use some kit decals uh, primarily the slime lights so the night formation lights and yeah they work really really well actually um, and I used the kit decals on the ordnance and they were and they were brilliant uh, they, they look really they look hideously thick on the sheet but if you use Mark Fit, uh, they, they go down really, really well. And um, I didn't do anything different that I normally do. 
uh, just put the satin varnish down and the carrier film just completely disappeared. Uh, and I know that Tamiya decals, they look really thick on the sheet, but they're no thicker than normal decals. Um, proven, friend of the channel, Drew, did that. He got his very precise micrometer thing. And um, yeah, it, uh, uh, they work really, really well. Right, so when the weathering was done, uh, and I did do oil weathering over the top, went back post shading again, then uh, it was time to bring it all together, all the sub-assemblies. The 3D printed landing gear I was very worried about, but it just clicks into place. It's just, the fit is beautiful, the detail's beautiful. So that went on. When that was on, then I put the actual rear, under rear fuselage uh, strakes, the ventral strakes on. Had I put them on earlier, I would have rubbed away um, the paint on the ends because it would have rested on it. Uh, and then it was just put it together, which was a joy. And then it was finished. Um, a lot of fussing with steps, ladders, pitots, aerials, hooks. It's a modern jet. Um, so there's a lot of sticky out bits. But um, I'm really, really, really happy with how it's turned out. Uh, yeah, just a beautiful, beautiful model. And I'm so glad I built one. Such a shame it's not going to be in my collection, eh? Um, but um, I'm hoping my friend, when he sees it in the flesh, is, um, is going to be very pleased with it. So, with that out the way, crikey, that's 22 minutes already, but I, I wanted to have a really good debrief on that model because I'm so pleased with how it's turned out. Uh, so, what is going to be next? Um, I don't know. Uh, I have a short list. I have the MiG-17 from Ammo in 48 scale, which I need to get done, and I'm going to use the new Ammo atom acrylic paints on that so I've got that to do that's going to be straight from the box so that might be quite a quick project um, and I'm really looking forward to that I'm uh, I also right so essentially why don't I list some of the kits that um, I'm going to do next year uh, while we're at it um, I was going to do this as a separate video in fact I still will but I might as well talk about it now so I've got that, the Ammo MiG-17. I've got the Airfix B-25 in 72nd scale, which is almost finished being riveted and the fuselage windows all put in and fared over. So I've got that one and I've got all the photo etch and bits and pieces for that. I've got uh, some Armour Hobby subjects. I've got another Hurricane that I want to do, convert that into a Sea Hurricane. I've got another Wildcat, which I'm going to do as a fleet air on one. And I've got the P-39, uh, which is all fully riveted and ready to go as well. Excuse me, hopefully that'll be a quick build. So I've got those to do. I'm going to do also the Tamiya 32nd scale Mark 14 conversion with Laminar Flow. That is going to be quite near quite near the top of the in-tray. I really want to get that done. I've got all the bits here, apart from Matthew from Laminar Flow Design um, did a cockpit upgrade set, and I've got a load of Barracuda Studios resin as well. Um, all of that to go in there. That's all at home. So I need to bring that stuff back. The other one I'm definitely going to do, another two, is I'm going to do the Trumpeter Fulmer, which is sat at home. I'm going to bring that back with me, and I'm going to do a sprue tour on that. Really looking forward to doing that one. I'm going to do my own mask, spray all the markings. I've got um, a scheme in mind for that. And I'm going to do a collaborative project with um, the uh, Propaganda Channel, which is uh, Rick Lawler. I've known Rick for a very long time. Just never met, but, you know, tippy-tappy. Um, and uh, I just uh, reached out to him. And, oh, God, I hate that phrase. Oh, I hate that phrase so much. Um, I, uh, I messaged Rick uh, and said, Hey, um, I know you're an armour and a diorama dude, 
but I know you've done a couple of sort of buddy builds. Um, I really, really want to do the Edward Spitfire Mark V in 48 scale. Hopefully we get a 70 second one next year. And um, I really love the Malta schemes because they were really quite unusual and really suit the Spitfire really well. And the weathering, you can really get a town on them. I was really inspired by the um, Armour Hurricane, which is also Malta based. And uh, would you be interested in doing a buddy build? And he said yes, which is brilliant. I sent him a couple of photos of Malta Spitfires and in their revetments and things, thinking, well, maybe you could do sort of your diorama thing with yours. Um, I'd love to do a, a little vignette, just even just a little base for mine, but I just don't have any of my diorama stuff here, and to get it out is going to be a bit of a nightmare, and to be honest, I don't have that much stuff, because I don't do dioramas. Um, so mine's just going to be a standalone, he's going to put his in the diorama. Don't know when that's going to be, he's got to fit into both our respective schedules, but uh, I'm sure we'll um, have a chat with each other and we can sort that out. So that's that one. Uh, the other one I'm going to do, oh crikey, the list is going on and on, isn't it? Um, right, I'm going to convert the Edward 109 in 48 scale, the G4 um, slash G2, pretty much the same aeroplane, um, into uh, a HA112K1L tripler, which is the precursor to the Bouchon. I'm going to bring back with me the, um, I did actually buy the Mulberry 3D printed set for that, but it's way too small. It just doesn't fit. Um, it, it, it's about 20% too small. So uh, unfortunately, um, that didn't, uh, that's not going to work. So what I have done is I've bought the SBS set and they, um, uh, it's designed for the Tamiya kit, but I'm hoping that it will fit the Edward kit without too much trouble. We shall find out. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to do the Bouchon, but in 72nd scale, using the newly released um, G2, G4 set. I've also got the G6 coming as well. So that, just that little quick, oh, or not so quick list, is pretty much all in next years. And that's without any releases. If Airfix release a long-nosed Blenheim in 48th, I will be doing that. If they release a 72nd Hampton, I will be doing that. If ICM release a 48th scale Hampton, bracket, probably very unlikely, I will be doing that. Special Hobby are releasing a Baltimore in 48th scale next year. It's supposed to be out in November. Um, but I did message them actually and said, here, oi, where's the Baltimore? It's coming next year. Uh, it's been delayed. So um, I'm definitely going to do that one. Uh, ju I just pff, have no idea um, uh, when I'm going to uh, fit all this stuff in. Um, so what I'm going to try and do next year is uh, really kind of limit my purchases. We'll see how that pans out, shall we? Uh, right, there we go. Um, crikey. Time is a marching, isn't it? Right. Um, you'll be pleased to know there's no news this um, this week. No new kits have been announced. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, so I do have some questions, though. Let's just go through those. Uh, sorry, bear with. Um, while I sort my telephone out, what is going on here? Oh, ah, technology. Right, I do screenshot them and then save them. Right, here we go. Right. Um, so the plastic modeler asks, what software hardware did you use to create your masks for the Hurricane? Uh, I use the... Um, now, I got the name wrong in the previous video. It's Affinity Designer 2, I think. Affinity, their second one anyway. That's the design software I use. And then I use the Silhouette Portrait 3 cutter. And yes, I'm researching how to do videos uh, filming the screen 
Um, right, sorry about that. The uh, the card was full, so I've had to change cards. Um, right, so Plastic Modeler, I hope that answers your question. Okay, so um, yeah, what was it? The Affinity Designer 2 and the Silhouette Portrait 3 was the kit I used. And yes, I've pretty much worked out now, I think, how to record the screen. So I will, when I suss it properly, do a video on how I make my masks. Uh, maybe I'll do it on the on the former. Uh, right. Um, I think I answered that one last week. I did. And that one. Right. Um, so, uh, Kitbuster asks, Hi Jamie, sorry to bother you uh, with a question. No bother at all. Thank you for submitting your questions. If anyone else has got any questions, fire them in. Uh, I enjoy answering them. Um, how are you thinning VMS satin varnish? I'm using uh, a SLT and a 0.2 needle. Seems a bit thick to use neat through a point, uh, though uh, through 0.4 needle is directed on the bottle. Um, they do recommend a 0.4 needle. Um, to be fair, I'm getting decent results with the SLT at about 70% thinner. Thoughts, tips appreciated. So I did, uh, I did reply um, uh, fairly quickly. So VMS uh, satin varnish, I get a few questions on this stuff. It is designed to be put on neat. Yes, it is thick in the bottle, but crank at the air pressure, 0.4 needle is is best and you want a nice wet coat don't flood the surface but a nice wet coat and it will level down and dry to a beautifully smooth uh, either matte or satin um, if you're using matte or satin um, I have got the gloss uh, but my gloss of choice is uh, the guns uh, GX100 um, and I don't think you're going to get a better gloss than that, frankly, but I have tried it. I primarily use the gloss to make the satin a little bit shinier. Um, so that is the VMS um, stuff. It is beautiful. Uh, Mr. Kit Buster chap uh, then uh, followed that advice and uh, I just said crank up the air pressure to blast it through your 0.2 needle, which is exactly what I do. And um, yeah, it works a treat. Uh, and he was very pleased with how it worked out. Right, Michael Hedenby asks uh, about the hurricane, I think. Um, fantastic work, Jamie, a piece of art. I have a question. After you've laid the satin varnish, do you continue to weather the hurricane with oils and filters? Do you spray on a second coat of satin varnish on top of that? Um, I don't normally put another satin coat to seal in the uh, oils and filters. I tend to, uh, when I finish doing the oils, is leave it overnight and by the next day it's dry enough to handle um, without leaving fingerprints and sponging and all that kind of stuff. Occasionally I will um, put a varnish over the top of stuff just if the sheen isn't what I'm after. So if it's maybe a little bit too shiny and I want to knock it back then um, I'll do that. What I have done and what I did on the Hurricane is in certain places, for example, over the exhaust stain, is I went over that with matte varnish. So you got the contrast between the smooth aluminium and the fabric. Uh, and yes, fabric is can be shiny. Um, so that is in satin. And then I wanted a contrast with the matte sooty um, type effect of the exhaust. So um, yes and no is the answer. But I don't do an overall another varnish coat to seal everything in. I think that's what you're after. And that's it for questions. Right, as I said, no news, uh, no news of any new kits. But um, we're getting towards that time where new uh, 2024 ranges are going to be announced. As soon as I hear anything, I will let you know and I will give you my thoughts uh, on those releases. Um, very excited to hear what Airfix has got coming out. Um, I'm, As I said, I'm really hoping for uh, a 48 scale long nose Blenheim. 
and uh, I'm really hopeful for a 70 second scale Hampton um, from Airfix, we shall see. Edward, um, yeah, they put a little teaser saying 170 second scale fans are going to be very pleased um, and they've got some 48 stuff coming out, maybe stuff that they haven't already announced, who knows. But um, be interested to see what they come out with the 72nd. Uh, be really interesting to hear if ICM make any announcements. Um, I, I would love, I would love a 48 scale Hampton from them. Um, that would be uh, fantastic. I think between Airfix and ICM, they're going to do all the uh, Second World War RAF twins, which would be uh, which would be great. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, and I think Armour. Um, what are Armour going to do next? Uh, obviously, the Hurricane. Um, uh, definitely going to see the Sea Hurricane. I think next year in two, uh, 2C and 2B form, um, although I can't wait, so I'm going to, uh, I've already chopped up my FX um, tail, and uh, that's uh, that's ready to go, uh, so um, yeah, expect to see that, uh, are they going to do, uh, they've said they've got big plans for 48, who knows what that's going to be, uh, maybe they're going to um, upscale one of their 70 second scale kits, Ki-84, P-39, I think are uh, front runners, or maybe they'll do something completely different, um, um, I would love, love a Razorback Spitfire Mark 14. Um, wouldn't that be lovely? Uh, I'd love to see a Typhoon, Sea Fury. Um, brilliant. Edward, uh, I was chatting to Drew today um, and uh, we were discussing things. 70 second scale, I, I'd love Spitfire 5. Um, he mentioned Tempest, wouldn't that be lovely? Sea Fury in either scale. Just fantastic, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Lots of speculation. Um, what I can guarantee, though, is videos from me on those. And um, that sort of horrible internet YouTube influencer reaction uh, to it. What a load of crap. Uh, but, um, yeah, anyway, uh, danger of waffling on. This has gone on far enough. Uh, I will be doing a few videos, I'm sure, while I'm at home uh, over Christmas, um, but we shall see. Uh, I just want to give it a bit of a break, as I said earlier on. Um, maybe I'll do something, maybe I won't, who knows. Right, there we are. I think I've um, blared on for far too long now. Uh, I'm going to go and chill out and uh, back to work tomorrow for a couple of days and then very exciting flying home. So, cheers, bye-bye.